Well, welcome. I'm Dan Klein uh, here at the Kerman Grotto, and with me now is the Democratic candidate for sheriff, Greg Ewing. And Greg, thanks for joining us here. Thank you, Dan. Um, a lot of questions that probably people have. What has this race been like as you've been facing off? Herb Jones, he's a veteran in this race, but you had a significant fundraising advantage. Right. Well, uh, you know, both uh, Herb and I are, are, are good friends. We've worked together for many years when he was with the state police. And, and so anytime you have a friendship like that, I mean, you know, we didn't have anything uh, dirty or mudsling or anything like that. And that's really what made this great is because, you know, we both get along and, and we both uh, ha have our own ideas and, and you know, uh, hats off to Herb as well for keeping the race clean. What, did you feel like this was much of a race? I mean, the, as of October 8th, you had 50 times more money. You had $60,000 in fundraising. He had like 1200 Did it feel like a race? Did you feel like you had to do much to, to win this? Well, I mean, you know, we never took anything for granted, and the race isn't over until the last votes counted. So, I mean, we ran hard. The team worked hard uh, all the way through the summer uh, into uh, and leading up to today. And, uh, you know, I was out running around to all the different precincts, uh, meeting people. So, you know, you just don't take anything for granted because you don't know, you know. And although, uh, yes, you know, we raised quite a bit of, of funds for the campaign, um, you know, you just don't know how that's going to translate into votes. If you become sheriff, what's the first thing you're going to do um, when you actually enter into that office? Well, the first thing uh, is obviously have to uh, set my administrative staff and, and then from there work on... Uh, the other divisions within the department and uh, the, the fortunate thing for me is that I come from the sheriff's department so I do have some general knowledge of the duties of the sheriff. Um, one of the things you talked about is you do not want to see any sort of nonviolent offenders released. You're looking for, you say they're just going to come right back. How are you going to solve some of the jail overcrowding issues then because of that? Well, I think what we have to do is obviously uh, the sheriff's office and law enforcement as a whole is only one part of the cog of the whole criminal justice system. So we've got to work with our court system, with our prosecutor's office, to move people through our system at a faster pace and get them at the state level in prison where they're off of the local taxpayer dollar and on the Hoosier tax dollar. So if we could get some of these uh, people that have sat in jail for, for years or two years uh, and get them to a state-level facility where all Hoosier are, are bearing the burden, if you will, then uh, that takes it off of us, the local taxpayers, and, and hopefully would reduce our jail overcrowding situation. And what can you do to make those? I mean, I'm sure prosecutors are working, trying to get as fast as they can, too. Sure. What's going to be different about what you can do to make that happen? Well, I think what we need to do is we need to sit down uh, at a round table with, with the, uh, the rest of the justice uh, judicial system and, and talk about, you know, working together. And not that that hasn't been done. I'm not insinuating that hasn't been done. But really make a, a certain effort to uh, uh, try and push these people through the system and out of our local pocketbook. One of the things you also mentioned is that it would be possible to do some renovations in the jail to expand it. Is that, how many cells could that happen? I mean, how much is that going to cost? What's some specifics on that? Right. Well, that is in the very preliminary stage. We do have a, a large indoor recreation area that could be turned into a barrack type of situation. Uh, that is an individual cells. That would be for like your mild offenders, uh, somebody that, you know, you're not going to be putting a, uh, a child molester with somebody that's a drunk driver, for example. So. Uh, somebody that could cohabitate in that type of setting. Um, and, and, you know, as far as the number of beds with, with a bunk, uh, you know, that still has to be determined. But it is one option uh, if we can't get those numbers down. Okay. And any, like, ceiling number on how many that would be, or is it still too early to say? It, it's still too early to say. Like I said, this would be an indoor uh, auditorium, basically, that would have to be turned into that. Uh, you know, I could uh, give you a figure, but it would be clearly off the top of my head. And I'm not a contractor, <laughs> so I have no, no idea. No, that's okay. That's all right. All right. Um, and the last thing you mentioned about was uh, one of the things you talked about is to try to get a full-time officer that will deal with just checking up with sex offenders and make sure they're um, uh, doing what they should be doing right. and not doing what they should not be right. doing. Right. How is that going to work? Where are you going to pull that officer from? What, what would be some, Any thoughts on that? Yeah, in looking at our staffing level and so forth, uh, we, we have maybe a little bit of room where we can dedicate somebody to that. Because let me tell you what, I have three children and one that is a month and a half old. And, you know, it's our duty to protect our children. And, um, you know, we know that the recidivism rate for child molesters is extremely high. We see it all over the news. So, um, you know, to, to not do anything would be a severe disadvantage or, or a disaster for our community. So 
I want to work to to get that full-time person to go out there and monitor these people as well as looking into the uh, perhaps uh, GPS tracking of those violent child molesters. And Andy, would they be pulled from, or is that someone that's available at some some point? I mean, you have to figure out who they would be, but right, right. Obviously, we know uh, the different crimes and so forth, uh, and the different levels for those that are are at high risk. Those are the ones that I am really concerned in. The the ones that have repeat uh, child molesting cases. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate you, Greg. Best thank of luck you. to you tonight. Thank you. All right, well, that again, that was uh, Democratic candidate for sheriff in Vigo County, Greg Ewing. And uh, that's about it for here. We'll try to get Tim Skinner and Clyde Kersey later on in this webcast. For now, Mark, I'll throw it back to you in the studio.